Hi folks, I recently got a really interesting question, which was if I'm a freelance uh, localizer or translator, or if I'm a language service provider, um, what can I do in order to um, ensure that my processes or my approach is as efficient as possible uh, when localizing a Prezi presentation? Um, how can I ensure that, um, or how can I uh, bring in my computer-assisted translation, uh, CAT uh, tools into the process in order to ensure consistency and um, to use the terminology uh, preferred by the client and so on. Um, so before we start, um, for those of you who haven't used Prezi presentations, um, or Prezi as an authoring environment, um, this is a cloud-based uh, authoring tool which um, basically sort of puts folks into um, PowerPoint success. Um, it comes with a number of quite exciting transitions and it allows uh, users to create a, create a lot of funkier presentations that uh, PowerPoint normally does. So it became more and more popular with uh, trainers. So now when these trainers want their presentations to be localized in other languages, um, then the localizers um, have a bit of a problem. Um, I, when I was looking at this topic, um, so what I wanted to, uh, to see is um, what's the most efficient way of uh, embedding um, CAT tools into the process of localizing a Prezi, or is it possible even uh, to use CAT tools for the localization? Um, so when I was looking into this, um, I, I found a number of resources, but um, none of them was really that helpful. Um, one of them came from um, the Prezi um, stroke TransFX uh, case study, but it turned out it really was about localizing the Prezi user interface rather than allowing uh, seamless localization of uh, Prezi content. Um, then um, I came across uh, a thread on the Prezi uh, support forum um, which suggested that um, the whole localization process is a really manual one. Um, so a content um, author would have to manually copy and paste and overwrite uh, the content of the original presentation, which Seems okay, but um, especially for larger, more complex presentations, it's not that efficient uh, because you can't really guarantee uh, consistency by just doing everything uh, manually. Um, in 2014, um, there was a, a LinkedIn post about um, localizing praises, but it turned to be a bit more like a teaser, um, in my opinion. Um, simply because uh, Levent told us that his company found a way uh, to localize it but didn't really tell us how. Um, so here we are in May 2017. Um, the, the alternative that I found um, involves a few steps and it also involves capitals. So I hope uh, that you find it useful. Um, by the way, I am uh, using Prezi uh, Classic and at the moment there is also the Prezi Next um, incarnation um, but most of the um, Prezi's around uh, have been created a while back uh, and they will be using this uh, Prezi Classic format. Um, I also uh, created a super basic um, presentation in, in Prezi for this demo. Um, it contains um, two text boxes on the main slide and then another uh, slide with a zooming transition with another text box and two images. So of course your uh, the presentations that you're going to work on um, localizing are going to be more, much more complex than this, um, but I just wanted to see how can we use CAD tools on this kind of content? Um, so what I found was that um, if you don't fancy doing everything by hand, as was uh, suggested in the 
uh, in the fora and the material available so far. Uh, by the way, let me just get rid of these um, tabs. Um, it's not really any use to simply send the link to your presentation uh, to your uh, localizer or to the language service provider that you're working with because when they get that link, all they can do is look at the presentation. That's it. Um, they can see the transitions and see the content, but they will actually have to um, recreate, retype the source content in order to um, be able to use it with any computer assisted translation tools. Um, so what's the alternative? The key to the whole localization process with um, with CAT tools um, is in this uh, in, is in the possibility of downloading and accessing the downloaded version of the presentation. So um, what Prezi does is it also allows the content creator to download uh, a standalone well, two standalone packages, uh, one for Windows, one for the Mac, um, in order to use them to present when they don't have access uh, to the internet. Um, so we really need those uh, downloaded packages for the localization process. Um, it used to be the case until very recently um, that you could simply share your presentation as a content author uh, with someone, um, so the localizer, and then that person would um, have access um, and have the same rights as you. Um, actually, before we start, uh, for good practice, it would be helpful uh, to keep one copy of your, well, create one copy of your presentation for each um, language, basically. Um, so rather than um, overwrite and then try and recover uh, versions. Um, let's start from, let's say this is my original, the English version of localizing, and let me duplicate this and rename it and use it for creating the Romanian version of this presentation. Okay. So now let's simply work on um, on this uh, on this Romanian version. So it used to be the case um, that I could simply choose to share my presentation, um, add the Prezi account of my uh, linguist, make that person an editor, and click on Add. And when my linguist went to um, his or her email address, they would get an email with a link to the presentation that could, they could edit. They would click on the edit the presentation link and then in addition to being able to overwrite the content, so here type in and delete, um, and also move things around, um, they would also be able to download. So when I exit uh, the editing environment, um, my linguists could also download the presentation. Um, now, this has become a pro feature. So you have to have a pro account with Prezi in order to download. Um, it's not that expensive, but again, it didn't used to be the case. So what you need to do as a linguist now or as an LSP, you need to go to the content author and ask them to download the presentation for you. Uh, they need to select the presenting option on Windows and Mac without installation. They need to download um, the whole package. Depending on how complex the presentation is, what kind of resources, um, images, text, transitions, etc., it contains, um, it can become quite a big uh, package. Um, but again, nothing that usually 
can be uh, handled by cloud um, storage, shared storage spaces. Uh, so once the presentation has been downloaded, uh, let us move it to my demo file. The, um, so the download comes as a zip archive, which needs to be unzipped. And then you see two files initially. One is the XA file, which can be run on Windows, and the other is another zip for the Mac. That's the one you need to be working with. Um, and inside the portable Prezi um, folder, which you get if you unzip the Mac version, you get one file, which I'm on a Mac at the moment. If you're on a Windows machine, it's not going to work for you. Um, so don't worry too much. Um, if you double click while you're on the Mac, uh, you get this um, presentation environment, which replicates uh, Prezi online. Um, if you are on a Windows machine, you will have got the same um, environment, but you had to double click on the uh, windows.exe file. Okay, so this is the downloaded presentation. Um, it's not synced live with the online presentation. Um, so you need to, okay, let me cancel this. Uh, so you need to contact your client and remind them that once they have sent you the, the download uh, package of their presentation, they should not, under any circumstances, change the presentation because you're not going to be able to reflect those changes um, unless they download it again and so on. Um, okay, so we have uh, we have seen what the um, presentation looks like. Now, if you're on a Windows machine, you will have noticed that when you unzipped the Prezi um, hyphen Mac dot zip file. You actually didn't just get one file, you got all of these. And I can access them on the Mac, but only I need to specifically show the, the package, uh, the package contents. So this is how Prezi organizes um, the, the resources in the presentation. Um, it has separate folders for fonts, images, sounds, um, flash files, and videos. And then it also has two files, one JSON, one XML. And these two files are the ones that actually contain the translatable content. So if we um, choose to open both of them, just to have a look, the JSON file, first of all, uh, let's look at it um, in a bit of a nicer format, has the title of your presentation, uh, which appears at the very top of the presentation window. So let's just go back. Uh, we don't need the downloads anymore. So let's go back just to demonstrate. This is your um, standalone presentation. This is the title, and this is the text that generates that title. Um, so that content, you may want to translate it. Um, and also, you may want to translate some of the content in the prezi.xml uh, file. Um, that file contains a lot of information about fonts initially, but then if you towards the end, you will see the uh, size of your text boxes. Um, so, as everyone knows, um, text translations out of English, uh, particularly, um, tend to expand, unless you go into Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, of course. Um, so you might, if you're working on the standalone version, uh, so you, your job is to localize the standalone uh, version of the presentation only, uh, you will also need that to, to change uh, these values. Um, and the content itself lives inside uh, these um, CData 
um, elements. Um, so you can see the title here, localizing a, pres a presentation, and then um, the next text box and the text on the last, on the second rather. Um, second slide um, is at the bottom as well. So now we have found out where our, te our text lives. How can we involve CAD tools in the localization pro uh, process? Um, and for those who haven't used CAD tools, um, maybe project managers especially, um, or, or Prezi content creators um, even more likely, um, I'm not talking just about machine translation, automatic translation like Google or um, Microsoft and so on. Um, I'm also talking, and I'm mainly talking about uh, computer assisted translation. So human translations, uh, glossaries uh, created for the specific needs of um, clients with their individualized terminology, um, translation memories which contain um, translations of previous uh, versions of the same presentation. Um, so it's human work in the background, it's not um, automatic work. And at times, actually in the case of marketing presentations, pretty much always, uh, you will get much better results uh, from human translation uh, compared to machine translation. So how can we enable the, the translators uh, to use the, the tools that they are, um, that they need uh, for their job? You can use any CAD tool um, that you have. Again, let me show the package contents for a little bit. Um, and you, in that case, you will need to import the JSON and the XML files into your preferred CAD tool. Uh, what I have found to be the easiest um, way to localize Prezi presentations, though, is to use MemSource. So MemSource is, is a cloud-based um, CAD tool, but it also comes with a, with a client um, that translators can use to localize offline as well. Um, and it has quite a lot of built-in project management features which, uh, which make it quite attractive. Um, what you need to do in MemSource um, is simply create uh, a project uh, so specify your source and target languages, um, connect your translation memories and term bases to the project, and then simply create a new job. Um, and this is where um, MemSource is quite, well, it's, it's super fun and um, quite a lot, uh, it saves a lot of time, is that for the new job, all you need to do is choose the whole presentation, the whole Mac um, version of the standalone presentation, and not worry about anything else. And MemSource is going to go through all those files that you saw in the package. It's going to discard the ones that it cannot uh, modify, such as flash files or uh, font files. And it's going to just uh, give you to the two that we already talked about, uh, the JSON and the XML file. If you want to have a look at them, you just need to click um, on the file name and in a little bit, um, MemSource is going to give you um, what it extracted from that file and it's going to allow you to type your translation uh, next to it. So uh, some of the content, so some of the attributes don't necessarily need to be extracted because all you need to do is um, for some of these uh, segments you'll just copy uh, the source across, uh, you leave it alone. Um, but for some others uh, you will see that you might get suggestions from the machine translation engine um, or if you have worked on a previous version of this presentation in the past, you're going to save time by uh, just inserting, uh, if it makes sense, 
uh, the presentation, the, the translation that you used before. Um, and so, and also um, you can use terminology that uh, your client prefers and which lives in your uh, term base. And you can do this collaboratively. So you can have several people working on the same um, localization project on the same presentation using the same resources. Um, so it's uh, extremely helpful and it ensures consistency at the same time. Um, so let's say that um, we have done this short file and we also need to click on the second short file just to have a look at it. Um, in the case of the XML, um, by default, with the default settings, MemSource will extract both the size uh, of the text box information and the uh, content itself. Um, so again, if you've localized this presentation before, uh, you might just need to copy things across and um, then if you're not happy, you can overwrite, for instance, with the type lazy. Yeah, that's OK. Um, or if you're, you can have a debate between your translators. Um, anyway, let's settle on that one. And Uh, let's correct a little bit the machine translation. And for this uh, presentation, um, the text was split into the... Ah, I must have imported the file with the, uh, with the soft breaks rather than um the original let me just check hang on uh, because i'm getting uh, those segments split where they shouldn't be split so let me delete and start again and just make sure that i am choosing the correct file from the desktop crazy localization because that uh, example of split segments, um, I was saving that for the follow-up presentation, which was dealing with um, badly formed, badly formatted uh, Prezi presentations. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, this is what I was looking for. Um, so if there is no reason to split uh, the, the segments, so if the content author didn't press enter in order to create new um, lines, then MemSource is gonna give you the text of the whole um, segment. Um, so let's start again. Very quickly, your freelancers are localizing. Ah, there we are. Um, I've already uh, changed in the previous um, presentation, even though it was the wrong one, um, but my translation memory uh, captured my preferred translation and it's now just fed it back to me and I can move on super quickly. And also I changed uh, the agreement and that's also been updated in the translation memory. So as you can see, from the point of view of a linguist, um, using cat tools is vital. So if you're a content creator, um, just pay attention to this. Okay, this is not brilliant Romanian, but it will do for the moment. Okay, so thanks to having access to the downloaded version of the Prezi, and also thanks to um, Mem sources time saving um, architecture. The localizers can access the presentation content super quickly. Uh, what they can do then also is 
if you give them access uh, to the presentation as editors, they can also download their translations as docx files, so bilingual docx files, which is going to show them on the left-hand side the original text, on the right-hand side uh, the translation, and let's go back to um, localizer mode. And now when they edit the presentation, their copy-paste is going to be a lot more accurate. So it is a shame that Prezi does not support um, XLIF format uh, or any other kind of um, export format suitable for translation like other authoring tools do, for instance, um, Articulate uh, Studio, Articulate Storyline, they do that. Um, but hey, we found a way around it. Um, so let's change the content. And if we want, we can uh, resize and change about um, and move. So you can spend a little bit of time um, reformatting the presentation. Um, let's copy the next, the content in the next box and overwrite it. And we'll leave it like that. And let's go to the second slide and do the same. So now we are editing the online version uh, of the presentation. And we couldn't do it, though, without actually having access to uh, down the downloaded, the standalone downloaded version. Um, let's move it a bit. And because we are working online, we can uh, resize the boxes uh, in any way we want. So that's why we don't really need to pay attention to the information on the size of the text boxes when uh, working on the on the Prezi presentation inside the cap tool. Um, and once we're done, we click on exit and our client should be able, with a simple refresh, da -da -da -da. there we are. They should be able uh, to access our work and um, just run it as normal. So to recap, the most important thing to remember is that you can um, use CAT tools in order to localize a Prezi presentation, um, but you do need to have access to the downloaded version of the presentation. Um, the easiest CAT tool, uh, or the, the CAT tool that at the moment, as far as I'm aware, handles uh, the localization process uh, in the most painless way, um, is Memsource um, by simply just importing uh, the whole um, download, the, the whole standalone uh, downloaded Prezi for the Mac. Um, the default file filters, um, import file filters, do show you a little bit of extra content uh, which you will need to just copy across and not change. Um, but if you want to change um, the, the filters, you can modify them to filter out um, that uh, the extra content if you want. Um, to be honest, for me, the default ones just work fine. And if you, as the content uh, author, if you share your presentation with the localizer, um, so you download first uh, your presentation, send them that uh, zip file, which was whatever um, zip, 
is created from the download and then also share the presentation so add them as editors then your localizer will be able to use memsource um, to to localize your translation and make sure that um, to localize your presentation and make sure the translation is consistent with uh, your own glossaries and translation memories and other uh, resources and secondly they will also be able to edit the presentation and do the copying and pasting and maybe also a little bit of the formatting uh, in case the translation is longer uh, than the initial um, space uh, allows and that's about it i hope this has been helpful and i'm looking forward to hearing from you um, if you have even better ways of handling prezi presentations bye for now and uh, see you soon